Um, well, you're always a better sec second time around. You're always a better candidate. Uh, he'd spent, in Iowa particularly, he'd spent about 70 days campaigning in 2007 and 2008, so he'd made a lot of friends. And, and those kinds of friendships don't just go away in politics. So he'd been around the state, he knew the state, and even though we didn't spend much time in Iowa in 2012, uh, all the relationships that were built in 2007 and 8 paid off in a big way. A couple reasons. Uh, I agree with Dave that he certainly was a better candidate the uh, second time around and you know you, you work out some of the kinks in your first campaign and so he certainly did that uh, in 2012. Uh, another reason was we spent more time in New Hampshire than we did in 2007. In 2007, as Dave will remember, you really we had an Iowa first strategy in New Hampshire was kind of 1B. We were there a lot but not as much. This time it was you know very much a New Hampshire strategy. We announced our campaign there. We really took great pains to focus on it. So I think uh, his skills as an improved candidate plus the additional focus on New Hampshire really paid dividends and led to a victory. Well, uh, New Hampshire has a long tradition that Jim can talk about. Iowa has a, a 40 year tradition now of the First in the Nation caucuses. Um, it's a good state because a lot of people don't really appreciate the fact that, that our result in the general election very much has mirrored the result uh, nationally in the general election. So we're very much reflective of how the country votes, even though uh, the criticism that we get for going first is that Iowa is, um, you know, 90 plus percent uh, white and, and so we don't have the ethnic diversity of a lot of other states. But, but in fact, the political participation uh, and the, the focus and attention of our caucus goers um, is, is quite impressive. People get to know the candidates, they do the work, they roll up their sleeves, they really try and, and, and help sort out. And it's got to start somewhere. It might as well be states that are accessible for candidates. Um, uh, you know, larger states put a, a very high financial barrier up for campaigns to get in, too. So this gives uh, candidates who maybe don't have $100 million to run a shot at, at getting a good start. Yeah, Dave makes a great point about accessibility, uh, both Iowa and New Hampshire. Uh, there's really a low threshold to getting involved and being involved, and certainly in New Hampshire, uh, in a presidential primary, we always see dozens of candidates on the ballot. It's a thousand dollars to get your name on the ballot. There aren't, uh, you know, convoluted procedures you've got to go through to get on the ballot, and so um, New Hampshire provides a great crucible for candidates uh, to crisscross the state to meet voters where they live, where they work, and it forces them to step outside of their talking points, forces them to step outside of the bubble in which they typically inhabit. Uh, in larger states, uh, a media bubble with paid media and otherwise, and it forces them to, to answer tough questions, to be real, to be human, and it, and it gives voters a real sense of who they are. Um, Iowa and New Hampshire have a great partnership, uh, by the way. Someone joked earlier about, you know, this is Iowa versus New Hampshire. It really isn't. You know, we've got a great uh, partnership. Iowa's the first caucus. We're the first primary. This year is our 100th anniversary for the signing of the uh, first presidential primary law in New Hampshire. And uh, we've begun to celebrate that a few months ago, and we've enjoyed a great relationship with Iowa over the years and partnering to uh, maintain our status as first. Well, you gotta you gotta start coming pretty soon, and you gotta organize. The best opportunity is to get involved in the 2014 campaign. In Iowa, we have a governor's race that is very important, and we have a United States Senate race, the first one we've had in a long time with an open Senate seat. So that's gonna draw a lot of people who are interested in 2016 to kind of road test their message, to come in and help our nominees in, in that race. And so 2014 provides an opportunity for people to come in and meet uh, you know, meet not only the, our candidates that are running, but our voters who are helping them and our volunteers. So I think you've, you've got to organize, you've got to commit to the process, and uh, and really, when when the uh, when the books close in the 2014 election, you better have an idea for for what you want to do, who your constituency is, the kind of campaign you want to run, and you probably should have some people lined up to start helping you. Dave makes a great point, and it's what we did with Governor Romney in New Hampshire and other states. Uh, you know, in the 2010 midterms between the 2008-2012 presidentials, Governor Romney was extremely involved uh, financially, supporting the party, supporting candidates, uh, but also coming up to campaign for candidates in New Hampshire. And so, you know, through that process, you make a lot of friends, you make a lot of relationships. So, so when the time comes to flip the switch and run a campaign, people know that you've stood there with you, uh, with them, and they're willing to stand there with you. And so, uh, we took that strategy in 2010. And so my recommendation to any candidate right now is to come early, come off and get to know folks and, uh, and get around the state and the midterms are a perfect opportunity to do just that.